Thank you. Uh, trustees, good evening, and good evening to members of the audience who've come this evening. We just want to share our appreciation for all of the feedback that we've heard over this previous week regarding uh, our statement on the immigration ban. Um, the response has been so profound that we've been unable to respond to everyone, um, although we are trying to respond to everyone. So we just appreciate our community. Trustees, you have um, a, a more complete report in your red folder of what our community shared. And I will just summarize to say it is just a tremendously encouraging time to hear that we live in a community that cares about all children, our immigrant children, our Muslim children, and all of our children, regardless of their situation or status. So we're very pleased with that. Secondly, this week is National School Counselors Week. We wanted to bring them out tonight, but I felt like they would appreciate probably more a night of not having to come out because they are out on so many nights. But we released a statement uh, uh, Monday um, this is the week we set aside to honor our dedicated counselors on behalf of the Ann Arbor Public Schools family, on behalf of the Board of Education. Uh, we just want to thank our school counselors for their dedicated service to students throughout the school year and beyond. This particular fall, the fall of 2016, we were reminded more than ever how much we count on our counseling team. We've stood in hospitals with them, in intensive care units, at memorial services, with groups of students, um, and they have been there at every occasion with one goal and only one goal in mind, and that is taking care of our children and their families. So um, we just want to express our appreciation for their devotion and caring for all who've suffered and who suffer every day. Uh, we appreciate their caring not only for our children, but I often see them attending to the adults in the room, and that is truly above and beyond uh, the call of duty. They actually regularly reach out to me, and I appreciate that very, very much. Um, they are hosting, if you've not seen it, on our website or on social media. They are currently sponsoring and hosting a grief and loss series of workshops uh, this year. One seminar was held at Pioneer right here on January 26th. The second will, will be offered at Huron High School coming up on February 16th. Skyline senior Dale Adams Tripp Apley is one of two students selected by Michigan Department of Education as delegates for the national for the United States Senate Youth Program. He will spend a week in Washington DC in March studying the federal government. He will also receive a $10,000 scholarship from the Hearst Foundation. So congratulations to Dale Apley. Trip Apley, he goes by. 17 Huron Medical Science Club students in Lynn Boland's health, class, health science class entered Regional Health Occupation Students of America competition, and all of them qualified for state competition. So congrats to those Huron students. Pioneer math teacher Michelle Mackey reports that 20 students from the four Ann Arbor Public High Schools were in the top 100 scores for Michigan Mathematics Prize Competition this year. These students will attend a banquet in March to find out their final ranking. But even to be in the top 100 is just a huge honor. Kudos to the district math teachers their students and the parents who support them. It is amazing that Ann Arbor Public Schools made up 20% of the top 100 winners from the entire state. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Each year, Huron chemistry students hold a fundraiser called the Silver Bottle Charity Lab. And this year they raised $1,093, which they donated to Alpha House in Ann Arbor. Bar Barb Schenk is the chemistry teacher, and we just congratulate them uh, for doing that fundraiser. 
Pioneer Band students received 113 first division and 29 second division ratings in the solo competition, as well as 90 first division and 42 second division ratings in ensemble competition hosted on January 28th, right here at Ann Arbor Pioneer High School. Students throughout the state performed in the state qualifying event, and congrats to Pioneer. Pioneer hosted another successful Future Stars program featuring our amazing and talented high school students from all across Ann Arbor. 60 Huron students in Amy Grant's IB English classes were inspired by her kindergarten son's idea of asking for donations to the Washtenaw County's education project for homeless youth instead of presents for his birthday in December. Her son raised over $200 for the project. The Huron students that were inspired ran with the idea and they raised $1,933 for charities. They volunteered 23 hours. They donated three boxes of food and one box of household goods. They sent 25 emails for a social justice issue. They donated to food gatherers, the ACLU, and Veterans Affairs, among many other charities. King Elementary School deserves congratulations tonight. They've just been, we just received their notification that they've received a Rain Garden Leadership Award from Washtenaw County Resource Commissioner. The award is to honor the work in environmental education with the students at King and their award ceremonies coming up. Trustees will get that out to you in case you want to join them. On January uh, 21st, I was pleased to attend uh, a seminar on school law and finance with uh, Vice President Basquette and Trustee Manley. It was hosted by Plant Moran. We had a great day there together. Um, on Monday, 23, uh, January 23rd, I had the great opportunity to present at the district's PTO Council. We were with them uh, talking about parent engagement. It was a great evening with that group that does so much work uh, for the district. On January 26, I was able to participate in a community discussion with our partners from the University of Michigan School of Education. Dean Elizabeth Moji hosted the event, which included tech talks and a panel discussion about the IB program in the Mitchell Scarlet Huron U of M partnership. Um, which featured our assistant superintendent, Leanne Dickinson Kelly, and our principals, Kevin Carr and Gerald Vasquez. And we had a great number of uh, Mitchell Scarlet Huron staff there that evening. I was also pleased to have uh, Trustee Gaynor join us at that event. They had the coolest venue of any event I've been able to go to in a while. Uh, it was the distillery, a very cool spot. On January 28th, I had the pleasure of, att of attending a retreat about equity and race with President Stead, hosted by the Washtenaw Intermediate School District. And we had several of our trustees there with us that day. Simone Lightfoot, uh, Trustee Jessica Kelly, Trustee Jeff Gaynor, and um, of course, um, uh, President Stead was helping us get all of that pulled together. I hope I didn't miss anyone. Um, so it was a great day. And that beautiful piece about that day was it was board members and superintendents from all over Washtenaw County with a focus on how are we going to improve our schools in Washtenaw County? How will we work together and partner to make that happen? On January 31st, the Skyline Orchestra performed in, with the Ann Arbor Symphony Orchestra in a side-by-side -side concert. It was amazing. And trustees, if you look closely at this, it's hard to tell which of these amazing musicians are students and which ones are professional musicians. So we were delighted. Our students played beautifully uh, right alongside the professional musicians. And my question leaving the event, and I put my team on it, was how to make this happen at every one of our high schools so that the symphony would come in and actually uh, rehearse and uh, help the students support them and then actually 
give a concert. So kudos to Skyline for that. This past Monday, I was able to be at APAC um, meeting uh, and was pleased to see a great panel uh, of our educators and uh, Ms. Dickinson Kelly facilitated that panel, and we were really focusing on alternate routes to an Ann Arbor Public Schools high school diploma. And trustees, we've included just a couple of those pieces in your packets tonight. Uh, it was just a very impressive time to really think about how our students can differentiate their own high school learning in the Ann Arbor Public Schools and make it work for them. I uh, was very pleased to get to the city council meeting on Monday evening. I want to thank our city council partners. I had the great opportunity of being there as they approved their resolution uh, on behalf of ensuring that Ann Arbor is a safe and welcoming place for all in our community. Uh, they also released their report on the pedestrian safety that we've been waiting on and very much appreciate their work in partnership with Mayor Taylor and with City Manager Lazarus on that project. We continue to work with city official, officials to address the issues of pedestrian safety and establishing school safety zones throughout our, transport, uh, through our Transportation Safety Committee. That committee met again yesterday. I appreciated Mr. Dave Combs as sitting in for me. Um, and appreciated also the attendance of the city administrator, Howard Lazarus, council member Jack Eaton, along with others who are lending their expertise to this important, important project. And you'll hear more about that over the coming days. Um, you may or may not have seen it yet, but Niche, uh, which is a website for uh, researching K-12 schools, has ranked the Ann Arbor Public Schools as number seven in the state of Michigan based on a ACT, SAT scores, student-teacher ratio, the quality of colleges that students consider, and reviews from students and parents. The state of Michigan has released its 2015-16 uh, report card. I won't say much about this because I feel like planning will be sharing this um, during their report coming up. Uh, but we do want to uh, report and congratulate our schools that have received a reward status. Um, we were second in the state for the number of schools that received that reward status, which means they obtained 85% or greater of the points on all the components that are involved in the report card, and you'll hear more about that. So congratulations to Community, Allen, Angel, Baugh, Eberwhite, King, and Wines. Um, in achieving seven schools on the rewards list, the Ann Arbor Public Schools is second in the state for the number. I also want to send my hearty congratulations to Scarlet Middle School, which as you know, trustees, is a reward school and they have done incredible work and are making deep progress on uh, meeting their goals and um, they probably would be rolling off the rewards, off the focus list, but as you all know, trustees with the state, it doesn't exactly work that way. So uh, it may be a while before we see that happen, but I do want to acknowledge that the work and the outcomes are occurring at Scarlet Middle School. I'm really proud of that team. Tomorrow night, and I know many of us are looking forward to this annual event, it is orchestra night in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Each of our middle and high school orchestras will perform at Hill Auditorium. The students are amazing. The venue is wonderful. The crowd, you better get there early or try to walk or Uber or something because it's hard to get in. But it is just one of the best nights of the year and really shows the AAPS Arts advantage that we are so proud of and we never want to take for granted uh, the beautiful arts programming that we're able to offer. On that note, uh, Clay Orchestra Director Miss Abigail Alwyn received the Michigan String Teacher of the Year Award. She and the Clay or Orchestra will be one of the featured acts tomorrow, so I hope everybody can join us at Hill Auditorium. Uh, we have three great videos uh, to share, and while Mr. Cluey is bringing those up, they're very short, by the way, so don't get worried. Um, but while that's coming up, I do want to share, if you've not seen 
the press release that just came out just about three hours ago from, um, from the state superintendent. Uh, Governor Snyder released his um, uh, proposed budget uh, for this year. We know that is, this is the first of three legs of the stool as we do our budgeting process in the spring. So the governor is first, and then it will be both houses of the legislature. Uh, Ms. Minnick is keeping a close eye on this, but I do want to acknowledge um, that the governor is proposing some additions to education, pre-K-12 education funding, particularly adding to the Per People Foundation um, also um, adding to at-risk funding. I know that the trustees and I will be lobbying, advocating on the behalf of the Ann Arbor Public Schools because we've been one of the districts that although we have more students, a larger number of students impacted by poverty than any of the districts in Southeast Michigan, we have not received this money because of that hold harmless uh, legislation that's that's kind of antiquated. So we are excited about the possibility, uh, but we will recall that this was also in the preliminary budget last year and was removed before the end of the process. So we've been texting with our legislators today and encouraging them to stay the full course this year so that that money can benefit our students. We certainly don't begrudge it to anyone else, but we certainly believe that the money to support students in poverty and students at risk should follow every student that is in that uh, circumstance. And so we'll be lobbying for that as we move forward. Uh, just a couple other highlights, a one-time investment of $20 million for career and technology education, very exciting component. And then also uh, we're grateful to see the $153 million into our MIPSERS teacher retirement Fund, and we do appreciate that that's in there. Again, trustees will be busy with this over the coming months, so that's just a preview of coming attractions, and uh, we hope it turns out as well as it looks on this great evening. So with that, uh, we have been working together throughout this school year with a theme of A Together, and you've seen that theme everywhere, and that was birthed out of the summer uh, work and our concern that the national narrative um, is damaging to students. A national narrative that is marginalizing um, causes our students to be afraid. And we want in the Ann Arbor Public Schools to take the strongest of stands on behalf of our students and ensuring that our local narrative is one of welcome and embrace and celebration of difference and knowing that we are A together in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. So a week ago, when we uh, were working on the immigration statement, we just shouted out to all of our schools to send us some of their examples of how they're pulling A together. And we have just a couple of quick Twitter videos that I hope will inspire you as they inspire us every day. As we close out, boys and girls, you remember in the fall that there were some adults in our world that weren't talking very nicely about one another. Do you remember that? And when Mrs. Desmondi came, we, we got together and we took a pledge. We said that we're not going to be a world where people are going to be unkind to one another. We're going to be encouraging togetherness, not excluding, right? We're going to be inclusive because that's the kind of school that we want to learn in and the kind of community that we want to live in. So join me, boys and girls. This is a safe place. No matter what happens outside, in this school, I know that I am safe, respected, and valued. I am listened to, cared about, and believed in. No matter what, no matter what this, is a safe place. this is a safe place. Boys and girls, thank you for making that pledge. Thank you for sticking together and including everybody and helping everybody be friends. And secondly, Bryant children, if you've not seen this on Twitter, by the way, that first video had over 10,000 views on Facebook uh, this past week. 
Um, this next one, I don't know how many thousand, but it had several thousand. And closest uh, to me personally is that it encourages me. Um, both of these do. So perhaps some of our national politicians could take a lesson or two from our children in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. So we've been driving this theme throughout the year, and we try to three or four times a year center back on the theme. And at the beginning of the semester, and by the way, congrats to all of our amazing teachers and staff and our students who've begun second semester uh, just recently. It's that time of year. Um, so this was the most recent A Together video that was published to launch uh, second semester. At the start of the school year, we committed to work A Together to ensure all Ann Arbor Public Schools students, parents, and the entire community would be accepted, embraced, and supported. A together, we have done amazing work inside the classroom and beyond to ensure all students can grow, thrive, and succeed no matter what has been happening in the world around us. Here are just a few of the A together moments from the first semester. As we kick off the second half of the 2016-17 school year, we know many of our children continue to have growing concerns from what they see and hear in the news every day. We must rededicate ourselves to work A together to do everything in our power to make the entire Ann Arbor Public Schools community feel supported. What can we do A together in 2017? Yes, thank you. So thanks to Mr. Cluey and uh, Scott Nadeau, his partner, who uh, produced that video. That was the prompt for a discussion that our teams are having about how to continue to drive this theme throughout the year. It becomes more clear every week that we must act locally to ensure that our students have every opportunity. And so I want to, again, thank our teachers and our staff for making this happen and for making our schools the safest of places for our children to grow and learn every day. Thank you, trustees, for your patience. I know that was a longer than usual update, but I felt like it was important information. Thank you.